Hey everyone, I'm Rather Incoherent, and while I'm relatively new to Rome Total Realism Imperium Seractum, I am still interested in showing off some strategies that I'm fairly sure are super unusual and that might not continue to work the same way in 0.6 a month from now. So what I want to show off in this campaign is a very unintuitive start that you can use as Rome and probably several other larger factions. Let's get into the campaign and I'll start talking about it there. So as you load into Rome, you'll notice that you might start off with a negative 13,000 in debt. And obviously this gets less bad if you go through everywhere and crank all your taxes to max. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that real quick just to show off what it could be reduced down to. Alright, having gone through everything and gotten the tax as high as it'll go, this might not be entirely accurate, but we're at minus 7,000 gold a turn, and that's pretty tremendous debt. Typically, the plan with factions is you assemble your starting armies, you consolidate down, you go to another place and you conquer. And with Rome, you easily have enough men in the south to go to Syracuse, you have enough men in the north to go to Cisalpine Gaul and start conquering all of this. There's plenty of land you can conquer, but the reality is that Rome's just so big that consolidating across Italy, even your army in the south and your army in the north, by the time you're taking more land, my experience was I was tremendously into the negative tens of thousands, negative twenty thousands of debt, and I didn't feel like I was turning it around. I felt like I was running on steam and economically destroying myself by keeping all of these armies. So there's a thing I consider that's unintuitive, but actually seemingly very strong, and that's why should I keep these armies? If I look at this legion, it's got a general, Velites, a Lucanian infantry, which is a spearman, Hestati. I think that's one Princapes, one Triarii, one Equites. It's not exactly a full army. And if you look around, you're going to gather like a fairly ragtag army together across all of your units, or all of your regions, rather. You'll probably disband stuff over here, and then in the north we'll assemble another one. But these aren't really good armies. And let's just go through and disband everything and show how cheap that gets, because it turns out there's a very good argument to do this. One of the less intuitive things I'll be doing is essentially to build money. I will build Lucanian infantry where I can, and then reinforce other towns to disband Bellates there, which is essentially worth 200 gold per turn for only an investment of about 700, right? 1200, but still. 1200 gold for 200 gold per turn is about as good as you can possibly get, so I'll be doing that in a lot of cities. So having gone through all my cities, there are a couple of cities where I've disbanded their garrison to build cheaper garrisons. I'm already at plus 15,000 gold a turn. We're up 22,000 gold by disbanding our armies. And you might think this is a dangerous thing to do and obviously a bad idea. Who's going to attack me about it? Syracuse? Epirus? Any other Greek faction? No, they can't do naval invasions for the life of them. The only risk is up here, and this is, what, a two-settlement faction? We're still so much stronger than them by unit count that even though, realistically, our defenses are terrible, it will be an easy war where they can take multiple cities before I can respawn, I'm under no risk of being attacked by doing this. The only person who would reasonably have a chance to aggress against me is so much smaller than me that even having disbanded my entire standing army, they wouldn't take the risk. And it turns out that keeping your opening garbage armies and trying to conquer stuff with them is probably a lot less effective in the long run than just entering an immediate golden age by completely demilitarizing Rome. Which is a weird one. But there's more to it than that. Let's go through all of our cities and the buildings now and disband everything that we don't need. For instance, we're never going to need a stables or a practice range anywhere except for our recruiting centers, which by the way will be Rome and Capua, our two largest settlements by a very large margin. So let's quickly go destroy every single one of these stables and practice ranges in other cities. We're probably destroying more than that, but that's the start. And with that done, we've gained about three or 4,000 denarii, which is a nice boost to where we previously were. There's still a little bit more finagling I want to do with my garrisons, I think. We have people where this guy is floating around, we have our generals, and we do kind of sort of like consolidate all of them back in our main areas. Obviously, this town's not doing great, and it'll need to have its taxes reduced since it has a lower garrison now. I'm going to do a lot of finagling to try to get as many of these Lucanian infantry as I can in place of Bellates across this entire kingdom. All right, we're back down to 8,000, up to 17,000 per turn with a few more Velites to lead it. That'll go down a little bit as our garrisons pop in next turn, though. Next thing I want to do is start pulling every single one of my fan members over to Rome. They'll be leading armies in the future, so they don't have much to do here, unfortunately. All right, with one exception, because this general currently can't be moved, every general is currently on their way to Rome. And the spies also going to start heading up to our only actual threatening neighbor that we could possibly see. And our diplomat will head the same direction to pick up trade rights. We may start with those. We do not. 
I'll give you map information. How much money are you willing to give me? Would you consider? All right, they don't have much, but I mean, fine. Our thanks. It's still money. And we start circling around to Greece. Start getting trading rights over there eventually. And you can see we've almost used all of our money making new garrisons to accomplish this demilitarization and be as efficient as possible with how much money we're spending on Bellates as opposed to base spearmen. We could make more money by keeping our generals back in these territories right now, but I think that's wholly unnecessary. And in my opinion, the build order goes elite tax, then farms, happiness buildings so it gets you a tax bracket, otherwise just check whether roads, ports, traders, whatever gives you the most money. And as we have just enough money for an elite tax, well, we could also build several shit farms though, right? It's probably worse than building three farms. So since we're not currently build locked on everything, I think farms are better. And this is also our one chance to build farms in places like Capua before we really get off the ground, because those are gonna be stuck building nothing but recruitment centers in the near future. So getting those early farms in Rome and Capua are worth a lot, because this might be their only chance to build them, as they have tons and tons of buildings they'll need in the near future for recreating our future legions. Almost like Croton and dear God, well, how do I pronounce that? <laughs> Rebel, or riot at least, because I forgot to adjust their taxes after deleting their garrisons. But with that sorted, I believe it's time to go into our next turn. I'm going to show the second turn and a little bit of the infrastructure over the first 20 turns, but by and large, from here on forward, there's going to be a ton of editing this down, because basically the plan is I spend money to build the things, and it's according to the exact build order I just gave, right? If we're not building everywhere, farms are the cheapest and most efficient. If we are building everywhere, then the tax is the best money for your investment, and if we are done with both of those in a given settlement, then we just do whichever one highlights the biggest green numbers in the build tab. Going to the second turn, you can see we're down to a little under 11,000 income. That's not as impressive now that the garrisons have been built. However, it's also worth noting that's still a 19,000 swing compared to where we were before we demilitarized. It's just so hard to conquer hard enough to justify that financial swing to me. I'd much rather build better legions in 20 turns and start conquering late. With the massive economic head start this gives, and you'll start seeing just how effective it is very, very soon, thanks to the magic of editing. First, let's get this last soldier free, or this last family member, rather. This strategy is going to change a lot going into 0.6, which is part of why I wanted to do it. The four turn per year change is going to result in the things where I leave empty settlements, rioting because there would be no one in them for a hot second. The income balance of all of this will change. The quality and size of your starting armies are going to change. The economy is being rebalanced for that. There's so much changing that I really just want to put this down for history so I can see how it fares in the future by comparison. It looks like the guy in Paston was also trapped for a round. He's able to leave to Rome now, though. Probably not Paston, right? Probably like Paestum. I just seriously doubt that's pronounced Paste. Another fairly large change that generals will be reduced in size going into 0.6 by about half, resulting in my first legion being substantially weaker if I rely on generals to fill the cavalry for it, which is very likely, at least in this version. All right, so our actual income is looking to be about 9,900 after we built our last garrison unit here, having adjusted our taxes everywhere. It's such a huge economic swing. I cannot say that enough. I'm going to stop saying it now, though. And now we get into finally just going through our settlements and building farms everywhere. A big part of the reason that I'm building farms everywhere as opposed to elite taxes to show it off with this graphic. You can see just how many places I'm building by starting farms everywhere, whereas with elite taxes, I'd be getting far less of my settlements actually doing something with their build time. Anyways, next turn. It's not like I have any wars to manage. Your honor. It turns out I forgot some things like moving this diplomat, and this diplomat should actually not be going right. He should be going left to this barbarian tribe to get trade rights with them before I leave. Now, part of the reason for consolidating my units like this, even though I don't necessarily need to do that right now, is because now I'm going to go through every single settlement, and if it's not Capua or Rome explicitly, I'm deleting every single building it has for units. That includes barracks and recruitment centers, because now I know for a fact I will never need them in any of these places. Now, for those of you who are thinking this is too much, is it really worth it? I have 50,000 denarii after destroying all of those recruiting centers, all of those barracks, all of those completely unnecessary practice ranges and stables, because let's be real, you can't afford even close to building out of your entire kingdom at once. If you built one unit out of every settlement you had, you'd be bankrupt next turn. That's not actually a thing you're realistically able to do, but you can realistically and immediately reinvest all of this very meaningfully. 
It is turn three of Rome Total Reels of Imperium Rectum. I'm building in every settlement. And if we were to click through those settlements, you'll see that I am building farms in the ones that I started with because I couldn't afford to build everything everywhere at first. And then in the rest of them, I'm building elite taxes. And that is going to continue on. Like 8,000 is not enough to build forever. But I have 23,000 banked, and my income is going to steadily rise from here. And we're going to maintain permanently building buildings everywhere pretty much forever. At this point, our major goal is to recruit proper legions in Rome and Capua. We want to be able to recruit and retrain with bonuses, Principes, Archers, and Hasadi, not Hasadi, Equites in Rome. And Capua needs to be able to train those as well. Ideally, they'll come out of here properly equipped already, but I'm fine doing all of it in Rome. But for now, that's the turn. We have our gaggle of generals here. They'll be off to lead legions around turn 20, I imagine. But for now, let's get some trade rights and start skipping through these turns just about as fast as I can. What do you consider? $200 for my map, huh? Sure, why not? Uh, it's money. At once. At once. And oh. off to Greasy Goats. And we can immediately start handling building by using this tab. It's wonderful. I don't know if it's worth crop rotation in our recruiting centers or if we should get straight into making legions. We're currently losing population in Rome. I'm not sure I really care, but at the same time, it's very close. Do I want to go for army barracks or do I want to spend some time going for crop rotation? I figure if I'm going to go for a golden age and then explode strategy, let's actually do the golden age. Let's fully max out our farm tiers and Capua in Rome. And then in every one of these cities that just finished their farms, it's time to build an elite tax. And as you can see, we burned that starting money pretty fast. We're down to 9,000 per turn with 9,000 left in the bank. But as these are all going to be finishing elite taxes, which is about 500 more gold per town, that's going to start stacking up pretty nicely. It's not like we're increasing our income, or not income, increasing our expenses at all. Because we're not building units yet. We just don't need them. And in the relatively near future, I am going to start using generals to build watchtowers across my kingdom. Right now, it's just not necessary. I want to make sure I don't actually bottleneck my money. Our spy is finally reaching the northern border so that we can keep an eye on our neighbors, make sure they don't get up to nothing. In the future, when we do make our legions, we'll want to start by going for cities like this one, as in actual cities, so that we can conquer them and turn them into recruiting areas for our new legions in our new wars. Rome is just the launching point. In future campaigns, we need to take cities like Bononia, Syracuse, Carthage itself, Athens, I forget the name of the capital of Macedon, but we intend to start naval invasions by going straight for the capital of every single person we go to war with. And once again, every single city that just finished building something is now building an elite tax, which should mean that basically every single city except for Capua and Rome, the game did not like that for some reason, every single city except for Capua and Rome is currently building an elite tax. It is turn five, I think. And it is insanely hard for me to argue that I could do anything better than this by using my starting military. The amount of income that I get with this is just nuts. You can see our income has jumped up to 16 and a half thousand. And the beautiful part is that now that we've done the elite taxes everywhere. Why is it going away? Oh, I see. I have to click on it from here. The UI for Rome Remastered just gets me sometimes. But now that we've done elite tax everywhere, building stuff like communal farms next is, by comparison, incredibly cheap. We're going to start stockpiling money every single turn here on forward. And basically, the restriction on when we can build our legions is when we finish the structures that produce them, not anything else. We'll come back to you in a second since it's a bit more complicated as you don't have a farm to build. Here we need settlement details. If we start building this, we can see... I don't want this one. I want money. We can see this makes us $28. What about the road? Well, that one makes us less. How are we doing on tax brackets? We're at the highest one, huh? Traitor it is. Not that it does much. And as you can see, our income's gonna be steadily rising. The amount banked is steadily increasing. We can't really start building legions now. We would very quickly run out of money, but we're not that far off of being able to do it. I do kind of regret going for crop rotation on these two settlements. I don't think I should have. It's hard to say, because long-term population growth obviously matters more in your recruiting centers. But at the same time, they're going to start growing faster once I recruit everyone who's currently dying of overpopulation. I think this is probably the best position for my spy. 
I'm really not worried about this at all. Even if I do get completely blindsided by them for some reason thinking they can take Rome despite my massive size advantage, I'll be able to muster a counteroffensive and wipe them off the map well before they take even four cities from me. Anyways, next turn. Case and point of the strategy. Going into 267, we have 21,000 in the bank, 20,000 made per turn. It's just kind of nuts. At this point, I'm gonna take some of my generals out and start having them build watchtowers along the coast because that's just a thing you really do need. Partly to see your own land and partly just because it helps you see if naval invasions are coming. We have much better sight range of our central territories now. We're gonna start building watchtowers around the rest of our coast as our three generals get around the continent. We have two coming down, one going up, because there's just less territory to cover up here, really. And that should be our whole territory covered in watchtowers relatively soon. All right, our view around the north of our land has gotten a lot better. We're much more easily able to see the troop movements happening here. Spoilers, they're just gonna run back and forth in and out of the city forever. That's what happened in my test campaign for this, and it's very funny to watch. And it's also starting to look much better on the southern side of things as well. And now it's time that we actually get started building units that help us with our war effort. We're currently already able to make... Oh, are we not actually able to construct archers at all? Is it that sad? That's unfortunate. We have a tier 2 archery range and we still can't do it. I'm tempted to go for grain imports and just... Wait, is this only one turn to build? That's got to be worth it to do in recruiting centers. So we're going to go ahead and build grain imports in both Capua and Rome. It's just one turn. That's going to be worth it in the long run for sure. Yeah, there's no Roman archer without finding area recruitment archers. We need to go conquer Crete, I guess. Man, I saw the custom vineyard building this region has access to, and I sort of assumed it would do something. Not without proper trade, I suppose. Almost managed to bottom out all money that turn, but that's because the grain import buildings are so expensive. I don't know that I want to deal with your problems, Basilia. I'm sorry. Until next time. It's neat that we start off with an alliance and trade rights. Don't really need to talk to you for anything anymore. Where did this diplomat come from? How did he get here? All right, it's time to get an army barracks in Rome, and let's see if we can't do the same thing in Capua. I think they might be a bit behind in that one. Yeah, they're gonna have to catch up. But there's nothing else I need them to be doing. If that's the case though, Rome is notably ahead of them. I can just build infrastructure in Rome for six turns. Or sorry, four turns. So I'll just build highways here instead. And then once these both finish, I'll build the same Prinkate structure for both and start building my legions. Yeah, those highways cost 9,600 gold. Let's reconsider this. We're instead going to build the Shrine to Minerva because that costs 500 upgrades light weapons and we will be using that to improve our soldiers here. As to our normal towns, I think it just makes the most sense to build public order bonus due to happiness and public order bonus due to law, right? Yeah. Also, I picked the wrong shrine in Rome. That's, that's just incorrect. We don't... Oh, they're not mutually exclusive in Rome to the realism. Well, shit. That's wonderful. Anyway, we want experience to train troops and light weapons then, I guess. Hey, I'm sorry, Rome doesn't have a normal trader. Build that instead. Just assumed it did. Just barely managing to get something building everywhere. The thing is, a lot of these places are actually about to run out of things to build entirely. This is where the max of Italy's starting income. It's gonna get a little bit higher, but not too much higher. At least not without more trade rights. Where are you, Greece? It looks like Senegalic is our first town to actually finish being able to build things. All that's left is recruitment structures, and we don't want those. So after this shrine, they're just done. Oh, I'm sorry, Corfinium's already finished. My bad. Bovianum's also finishing. Histonium is also just full-on done. And for the first time in a while, we're actually banking money this turn instead of dropping almost down to nothing. That's nice to see. Although with a few well-placed towers, we can drop our income back to nothing right quick. And that's our first set of towers done. We can start moving these generals back to Rome. Actually, it might be all three sets of towers done at pretty much the exact same moment by coincidence. Because this man is also finished and heading back to Rome. And this man just has one more tower to drop as well, meaning that the entirety of the Italian peninsula is now under the spotlight of our watchtowers. We can see everything with clarity. 
And theoretically, we could conquer these rubble settlements with relative ease, but I mean, we'd much rather conquer actual settlements with reasons to own them, not this random garbage town right here. Yeah, Syracuse just has a diplomat right here, but they don't want to talk to me. It's kind of upsetting. All right, Roe has two turns to build whatever it wants before it has to start catching up on military production. To me, it seems like it's going to be these two shrines. That seems very, very strong. Also, it's worth noting I was incorrect. Rome specifically seems to be able to make every shrine. I don't know if it's because of its size or if it's got like a unique building, because I know it does have a unique building. Yeah, the Capitoline Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. And this appears to just be like a big temple that it already has, but I don't know if anyone else can even build this. It is ranked two, implying it's part of a tech tray. Yeah, no, it's just right here. Uh, it's also called the Acropolis of Athens. Mm, I don't know about that. Not gonna worry about that. I've clearly gotten something wrong, or someone's gotten something wrong. I think it was me. All right, this is the first turn where I'm banking a substantial amount of money. I don't really care about banking money. I don't view it as a problem. From an RTS perspective, or I guess just a general strategy game perspective, if you have money you aren't using, that's resources you're not spending and you're falling behind. However, because of the intense economy drain of units, eventually I'll start building these legions and I will run out of money. I'm going to build them nonstop until my economy can no longer build more. And that will still happen even with this insane golden age. It's just going to be a much bigger boom than you would have with a normal campaign. For now though, two more turns until we start working towards Principes and eight more turns until we start actually producing them. In the summer of 264 BC, we finally meet Rome's famous allies. They got along very well with Epirus. A most generous oh, I meant to proposal. ask you for money for that. I guess we're going to be friends after all. I was being sarcastic, but fine. Anyway, we have trade rights with Epirus now. Up to 21,000 a turn, 37,000 banked, and finally time to start the military construction. Let's get the army barracks going in both Rome and Capua. Six turns from now, we start producing Principes, and then the world falls. So I just edited the first part of this video, and the major downside of this strategy is that it's not super exciting, right? This has been 20 minutes of infrastructure, and it's been one hour of real life managing it. However, it should also lead to some very explosive violence once these legions start getting produced. A quick look at the grass, you can see militarily we've lost about half of our might by killing those legions. It's kind of sad, it's not more than that. And there's reduction, we have skyrocketed and then flatlined at max production, basically. Unsurprisingly, our territory is steady at around 25. Financially, we probably aren't... Oh, wow, we're actually second best. We're only losing to, I assume, that's the Seleucids. That's fairly impressive, considering this is very hard and they have tons of AI hacks. I think that's a really good argument for why I feel so hype about this strategy. Anyway, let's keep building. We're going to breeze through the next six turns. Weird I'm being offered a candidate for adoption, but honestly, I don't feel like I need them. I've already got so many generals. <laughs> got nine. This guy's 29. I'd rather have younger people get in born. No, thank you. This guy is better than the last one at all for me. He's got four years younger, four more command stars. I'll take him. I'm also going to make friends with the Aetolian League. That seems sensible to me. They'd like to be my allies. But I don't need allies. This is total war. What I need is money. Would you consider? No, 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 no. I don't care about your map information, really. Regretfully, they really don't want to sell it to me. Decline. Well, I'll route this way. To try. Oh, they're just body blocking, man. That's pretty rude. That's a pretty large stack you have. I'll talk to them next turn then. I was gonna try to talk to them on my way to Athens, but I guess not. I wonder why it's giving me so many people. Anyway, this guy's not great. No, thank you. I guess I do have a low number of generals for how big my empire is. Also, I'm seeing a distressing amount of white hair down here. So to anyone who's been wondering in these past few clips why my money's been so low, it's because in all the buildings that have, or all the cities that have buildings to queue rather, I've been queuing up every building they have really. And at this point, the only places that don't have buildings queued either have nothing to build that I care about, or they're Rome slash Capua. So yeah, I've basically queued every building I care about in the entire empire and we're still three turns off from starting our our armies, so that's a disgusting amount of money. He's not idle, he's doing his job. This is what a spy is supposed to do, he's telling me what's going on. Benonia, you need to think better of this. I saw them do this before, run back and forth here a lot, build watchtowers. I don't think they're going to attack me. Can 
All right, Atoli and Lee, we got off on the wrong foot. What? How do you feel about trade lights for, like, map info over map info? I don't care anymore. A most generous Good, proposal. Good, thanks. I'm going to go talk to Macedon. I feel like I'm going to go talk to Macedon. It's just an ominous thing to say to most Greek city-states. Another potential candidate, another weak one, and no thank you. We are officially the richest faction. We're beating the Seleucids. Wonderful. The Seleucids? What happened to me? Where'd my bright-eyed child calling them the Seleucids go? I hate it. A part of me is, like, very upset with myself, because I think if I were really trying to optimize this right, we take everyone except the governor in here, and we just conquer these two cities with them. I have no reason to think that I can't pull that off. I'll just take, like, one or two units of spearmen with me to hold their infantry while I do stupid maneuvers. I feel like that would have been doable. You could easily have optimized this start more than I did. Oh, well. We're also going to try to make friends with the Boeotian League. A most generous proposal. I'm just done trying to sell map and focus. Who cares about money? I want the deal to be done with faster. The year is 261 BC. We're able to recruit Prinkipes two at a time. It's time to go hard. Well, it's time to go hard sometime in the near future, I suppose, is more accurate. I want this blacksmith, I think, first and foremost. Because we're going to be training everything at Rome, which I think means Capua doesn't care about any of this stuff. Because they're so far behind that we're always going to be retraining at Rome. In which case, I think we're better off just worrying about economy and other things like that over here. Almost no profits here. I don't understand. Why does the road get minus 112 for taxes? Tax income bonus minus 12%. Okay. It gets that because it says it does. Fair enough. The port's a loss of money. That sounds impossible. We need better trading partners or better things to trade. How is this making sense? You probably, to get good value out of trade, need to have a trader. It's not that he... I mean, he doesn't make any money either. How is everything a net loss of this settlement? <laughs> what fucking sense does that make? Okay, usually I feel pretty confident that I can sort of figure out how things are working. I would like to ask, does anyone know what economic building I'm supposed to make if every single one of these is a net loss of income? <laughs> How do I improve the economy of this settlement? I'm just going to build this to grow faster because everything else confuses and upsets me. So I think that I want 12 Prinkapes as my baseline. And these are going to take two turns to get over there, so I need five Prinkapes from here and seven from here. Am I going to bring any cavalry? Yes. So if I'm going to do something like 15 Prinkapes, five Equites, and five Generals, then that would be correct. There we go. Alt-right click to rally to Rome. Can I be and I believe we were making powerful friends over here. Let's go talk to the Antigonids. Trade rights, map info, map info. Demanding? Sure, whatever. Let's just do trade rights then. A most generous proposal. If you think your map's that cool, I guess I'll let you keep it. I will address them at once. I also like trade rights over here. Do you think yours is reasonable? I don't want you as a protector. That would just be inconvenient. Okay, cool. A most generous proposal. And the uh, Achaean League and the uh, Spartans are both down here, so I do need to come to Central Greece. I was going to say I probably want some Bellates, even though I hate them for sieges to manipulate with javelins, but all my Prinkapes have javelins, so it's probably fine. Hey, first town growth of the campaign. Congratulations, buddy. You're almost a real city. You know, it's not great this settlement at low tax rate is also still rioting, but we're building a bunch of happiness stuff here, so they'll sort themselves out. They might not even riot. Oh, hey, Syracuse. Remember when I said you didn't know how to declare war? Might have been wrong about that. Well, I guess I know who the target for the first legion is. <laughs> yeah, they'll take some land. It won't be a big problem. So there's the Achaean League. Let's get trade rights with them. A most generous proposal. That's a Spartan diplomat. We can get trade rights without going any further there as well. A most generous proposal. And then we start the long trek around to Anatolia. I mean, based on my Epirus campaign, they might just stand there for an awkwardly long amount of time, right? Yeah, I don't think they're standing there for an awkwardly long amount of time. I think they made the decision that they're here to conquer and they should probably get started on that. That's fine, though. 
This is basically the expectation with the strategy that eventually someone declares war on me, but it's too late. I've gotten the benefit already. Like, what are they going to do? Take this terrible city at the southern tip of my empire that is already kind of useless to me? That's fine. We will end up needing a boat at some point. Do I think I'll need a fleet? It seems like it might be worth building a fleet, but we're going to need several more turns of reduction before that happens. Oh, you know a good question about going to war with those guys? Who's just hanging out in the woods right now? Yeah, you know, some Sam Knights, no one special. What's your upkeep? Is it normal? 1375, 1393, 774. It's a little bit worse than normal, but like not actually bad. I think another person just to a slightly different area. This is a different settlement. I think it'll be the same pool. Yeah. So how many Prinkapes do I think I need before I'm comfortable dealing with this enemy army? Probably only about six. So after this, I'm going to start building Equites here. Let everything come up. Retrain it all. Speaking of, I probably need to retrain as they arrive. I'm going to see if it works like this in this version. I don't know if I have to slide them to the front. I feel like I do, but I could be wrong. Somehow, Syracuse did not come to the conclusion that they could win the siege that turn. Interesting. And now we can retrain all of these generals, so let's get started on that. We've just finished the blacksmith. The second tick will not give additional chevrons. Quick check, do I need higher level traders to upgrade this again? Market or above? Sounds like the best thing I can do then is to build a market. This city made it up to a town, so let's just queue up everything in what I feel like is roughly the correct order. Could be wrong, don't really care. And that'll be another turn where Syracuse could take a city from us, but I mean, they seem to be screwing around a little bit. Damn, I can't believe they're going to attack us like this. Theoretically, I could control this myself and deal slightly more casualties, but I don't care at all. Honestly, that's fine. I don't think it matters that they should have killed around, like, you know, the same number of men. Wait, they just stopped? They just took the city and didn't move forward? That's fantastic news. Over here, we're continuing to retrain everyone in this town and get another unit of Equites. Continue rallying. Turn, we'll begin to rally our defense, but for now, we wait one more turn. We probably should have built a boat if that was the case. Oh, hey, I found a Rhodian diplomat. Neat. Let's get some more trade rights. A most generous proposal. So we're building Prinkapes with two chevrons and silver swords. That's pretty damn solid. Now, these last two Prinkapes are not going to be able to get their upgraded gear. We just have to go now. And since we didn't build a boat, we don't have a boat. That's fine. This is pretty much a full stack. I mean, a weird, nasty full stack, but a full stack all the same. Now, the real question is, if I keep building for the second legion, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, absolutely. The issue is, of course, that you lose tremendous amounts of money here. The second legion is going to be being set straight at Rome's heart. The big problem is that since we're not making that much money, well, we'll probably be going into debt by the time it launches, but that's fine. I'm going to queue up the whole thing now. I'm just going to queue up the whole thing now. We need at least 10 Prinkapates. I'm expecting one of these generals to get sent back. Yeah, we'll pick them up along the way. It's fine. That's not really feasible. Who's my second best general? I'll just take one away. I'm going to take my second best general back to Rome so that he can lead the next legion in the future. How old is this guy? He looks very young. Not at all. 48. Never mind. Okay, so this is 8... 13 Prinkapes, 6 Aquites, full stack, more than enough to go straight to Carthage and kill them. And several turns, I'm going to queue up a few boats, and I'm going to forget about that and be very sad when the time comes. But that is the plan. For now, let's go mount a defense against Syracuse. I've had a thought. Which port is this for? Is it Grumentum? Build a boat, Grumentum. Why should I start by taking back the land that sucked and not just go straight for Syracuse itself? What am I doing? That's the thought I've had. Why mount a defense when you can mount a counter-offensive instead? Was that the whole turn? I think all I had to do was move units because everything is just already queued up. Okay, good. There's stuff to build in Capua and in Rome this turn. Good. We're going to upgrade the blacksmith in Rome. And in Capua, we're going to keep building the Forum until it starts being profitable to other buildings here. 
And everything that's not building has nothing that I want it to build. Same story over and over and over again. All right, next turn. Oh, wait. That's not the auto resource I care about. He's doing his job. Can I be of service? Wait, the Seleucids own this? Holy shit. I will that feels weird. Once. For once, they're going to say this is not balanced, and they're going to be right. Yeah. I'll just take trade rights if a that's good with you. Thank proposal. you. Without delay. I feel like that's unusual. I feel like they're conquering in this direction if they have that, but I could be wrong. Anyway, that's it for this turn. Operation Boat to Syracuse is underway. Hey, that army's finally moving. The question is, do I care? I really don't want it to keep conquering settlements, and I can I know I can beat it in a field battle. This guy's not great, but I need more generals for the second legion, so I'll take him. We can just get to him. And I know my army's stronger. Just because I have all these upgraded Prinkapes and the generals cav. It's not much better, but. Do I actually know my army stronger? I know that in an exchange of resources, I'm coming out ahead if I take Syracuse. So let's keep moving towards Syracuse. We're actually able to make it all the way down through this. There's an army there. Who cares? Rasan is not big yet. I'm going to keep moving partially until I'm able to see the coast. I do not want to get this army cult. That would be catastrophic. Hey, this is actually Syracuse. This is just a city next to it. On this is not Syracuse. Syracuse is all the way down here, isn't it? It's fine. All ashore. Oh, it is Syracuse. Okay, I'm going crazy. Prepare for battle. I am one tile short of starting the siege. Brutal. Anyway, you've done well, single boat. I guess you should come blockade Syracuse and hope you live long enough to hide in that port. One tile of movement short. That's a shame. Anyway, despite our constantly plummeting income due to all the units we're building, it doesn't actually matter because we've just got everything queued up. It doesn't really do anything. Anyway, next turn. Let's see what the Syracuse army does in light of recent events. They immediately went backwards. And I go, wait, hold up. That That's not good. They've got like a tiny little half stack. I'm really tempted to split my army and try to fight both, but if that army like gets in a boat, comes here and starts a fight all at the same time, it could be a problem. These garrisons aren't super large, but garrisons just have a habit of being a problem when you're talking about Greek factions. Let's just go straight for the throat and focus on the one thing that actually matters, right? Actually, I hate siege showers. Let's build saps instead. We have a real army that's built saps. Sir. Town grows great. Build a governor's palace once you finish. Uh, build it first. Oh my god, someone actually came of age naturally. Over here for some reason. Oh, there are two people coming of age over here. No. Get to Rome. What's wrong with you kids? Sir. Sure seemed like it said they weren't going to make it there on time, but I guess not. Probably don't need all of these equites now that we've gotten so many more people acquired. And I was expecting a big field battle with Syracuse, but this episode might just be ending with a single small siege against Syracuse before the war really gets underway. Alright, you'll notice my voice sounds pretty different. It's the next day. I wanted to edit the first part and see if there was enough time for an actual fight or even a couple of fights left in the video. And it looks like there is, but one major change does need to be made. It turns out saps are garbage and I want to use siege towers. I realized as I was starting the battle last time, I'm like, oh wait, this could go on for a while. How much time is actually in the video? And I had time during starting that battle before I decided to cut recording and go edit everything to make sure it was good, that I was able to see, oh my god, saps are terrible in this game. <laughs> I remembered them as being awesome from my childhood, and they kind of just aren't. A, to get up to big walls, you have to run into range of the towers and get shot. B, when you walk out of the saps after starting to get attacked or after knocking down the walls, the towers are still there and you can't give commands until everyone's out and they're shooting you the whole time you leave the saps. It's awful. And then, because you can't reposition the saps, you're not really able to like maneuver around the city and get a weak point. 
they're going to be relatively all next to each other. It's going to be very nasty trying to get past their wall guards, or sorry, their ground guards by comparison to what you can do with a siege tower. On the whole, I think siege towers are much, much better, and we definitely have time to get this war with Syracuse started this episode, so let's get into it. Next turn, I guess. What? Yeah, this didn't happen in the previous recording. What the fuck are you talking about? Wait, no, this guy. What unit is this? It is apparently... It's one unit of Syracuse and Cavalry. What are you talking about? What's the balance of power? Is there not numbers for this? If I had to do it by eye, I'd say it's three to one. Maybe four to one. Frankly, I feel fucking insulted you think it's that close. I believe holding I in a battle is how I get it. I can't click on them and get pop-ups for the information. This is the thing I didn't figure out in my last episode. But I think if you hold I, you can get in the battle. So let's, let's go fight this and see how it goes. I imagine we're gonna skip the siege entirely. <laughs> but I don't think the choice of siege weapon matters in this version of reality. So I'm gonna move my weakest infantries into the middle to avoid them getting crushed on the flanks. Put everyone relatively close. I noticed that you were doing the little thing with the bannermen. Can I alt slide? Yes, I can. I'm gonna slide everyone a little bit closer to get rid of that slight gap that's showing up between them due to the bannermen, since I do have time to do this. We're not actually in a fight yet. That is a mighty fine block of Prinkapes all set to throw. Where's guard mode? Here we go. I don't want them falling back. Don't need to lock you into formation. That way, if I move you around, oh, you're still doing it. Lock formation. There we go. And now I can move this as a block during the fight. That'll be nice. We have a fucking lot of Roman family members here. My plan, I think, is to immediately kill the enemy general with my cavalry. I don't know why they thought they could do this, but they cannot. As for the rest of my army, I think I saw them pop in here briefly. Yeah, they are... It's hard to see in the fog. There they are. Now, I suspect that this man may be led here by a completely misguided assessment of the battle. Yeah, I'd be shaken too! <laughs> Interesting choice, Syracuse! The enemy army is in flight! Pursue them and Okay, you guys are good, you can stop. How many family members do I have? I have four on each wing. You swing out to here. You pull back to here. You stop there. Is this their family member coming forward alone? What's wrong with Syracuse? Is Syracuse broken? Do they need help? What I'm gonna do is pull this to the other side of one. I can't. They don't like that. Okay, fair enough. Oh, that's what I can do. I can move the equities to the middle. That'll make it much cleaner to see in the heat of battle. Now, it looks to me like he wants to be dead. And once the charge is that time to move past, I'm going to start moving my Brinka pace. Because again, they're just running their cavalry forward without a care in the world. Uh, you don't even need to get involved, actually. Cool, that unit's dead. You guys back off, you don't need to be involved. What are these? Spearmen? I mean, normally I'd give a shit, but with number advantages like this... Fall back a little bit. Pull forward. They're continuing just to chase you. Just pull back over here. If they change their mind and go for the Prinkapes, they'll die horribly. I have all the time to reposition the world here. Give a charge to this so that you can pen them for them. That's dead to cavalry shortly. Hey, you guys. Javelins. Pull out to here. How are we doing before the cavalry gets here, by the way? The Syracuse and Hoplites are wavering just against the Precapes. Good deal. That is going to be completely dead. I do need to run them down, but that only takes, like, one guy, so the rest of you come back out. You also leave. Throw your javelins, throw your javelins. Oh, they've got javelins too. Not a fan. Back off a little bit. No reason to take wounds if you don't need to. 
So I think we conquered Syracuse without an actual siege battle. Uh, a couple of you should probably go for the rest of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and triple speed that because they're pinned for the cavalry and tremendously outnumbered. I don't really know what Syracuse was trying to pull here, but that was comically misguided. So they came in with 466 men. They left with four, so that's called the city is down. We lost 12. And some of that was probably friendly fire from our own javelins. Let's be real with ourselves. So Syracuse is down. I don't get to conquer it yet because technically they didn't sally forth. Oh wait, I do get to conquer it. Nice. It just for some reason took until Rhodes' turn to go through. I think I can occupy it without fear of anything bad happening this turn. But also, like, even if I kill 12,000, 13,000 people here, there's 4,000 left to recruit from. They'll grow incredibly fast. It'll be very hard to hold this. And realistically, this is the most useless recruiting foothold I'll ever get. And the main reason for that is just because, like, Carthage is further west. Athens is further east. If I need to go south, I'm not that far away from Rome. I think I'm happy to exterminate this just to make sure it's not a problem to hold it while I go to war with Syracuse. Enslavement could be the better call. But I'm having some pop Not really. The only place that was really a problem has been conquered, right? This is mostly for happiness reasons. So culling these 8,600 seems like the play. I don't think it was necessary to execute. I think enslavement is on the whole a much better economic choice. And two towns immediately expand from that. So let's get this going here. And does the other one also... I deleted the wrong one. Let me find it the hard way now. There we go. It was Bobby Annum. Nice. Now, coming over to Syracuse, I do want to hold this stuff here because it matters. I don't need Syracuse in recruitment. I would like that to be destroyed. Now, I do need my own recruitment, but I need this place to be happy first and foremost. So let's take a shrine to Saturn as our first thing. Well, actually, let's start by taking every general here. Who's the lowest population? Actually, who's the highest influence outside the general? The governor has 10 influence right now. He's only got three stars and 34 men. He can stand. All right, we need the cheese a little bit. One second. I'm going to take this guy and come lay siege Prepare here. Why'd you try to route that way then? What are you talking about? Okay, Order. let's try that again with like sane routing. It's bizarre to me that the game tried to do it that way. Now we siege here so that you can't retreat into the city. Now we take everyone except the governor. We rejoin this guy. We attack them, push them. What the fuck are you talking about, Syracuse? I need to not wipe them all out so I can get a forced draw out. One second. I was, I wanted to talk about Syracuse's happiness here. They're actually pretty close to being all right, just with a fantastic governor, low tax rate. And I think that means first things first, I go for recruitment because I can get away with a good governor and low tax rate. He's 57. He won't last long, but I think he'll last long enough. Please you rest. should be hiding in the yes, port, by the way, until we need you. Orders, attack. So, like, does anyone know what's up with the AI and the battles it thinks? This is more understandable, right? They're admittedly only 450 men down. It's not the madness that last episode was. And they do have a shitload of chevrons, which is scary. However, they don't have a general, and I have an eight-star general. I think part of it might be that the AI really undervalues how strong family members are right now. But even still, like, removing the, what, 200 men of family members, I still outnumber them with a vastly better general. It's weird they think they can take this. Let's go prove them wrong. The I'm not playing gone. in the fog. I don't even care who it gives an advantage to. I hate it. There we go. That's much nicer. Oh, a much faster way to do this is a control click and then slide. Yeah, this is much faster. That's a much nicer block formation. Control one. Wait, sorry, not you. Get out. How do I remove someone from a group? Because putting them in the group alone doesn't do it anymore. Control two as they're already in there doesn't do anything. It's fine, I guess. What I'll do is I'll just make this actual groups. Because it's not like they're forced into formation or anything. So now I have infantry. I have cavalry on both wings. Only the infantry is locked. The infantry. Let's try that again. The infantry. Guard mode, fire at will, start battle. I'd rather not fight in the woods, and I'd rather not fight tired, so I'll be back with you once everyone's gotten better from walking over here slowly and calmly. Don't want anyone winded for a fight. That's just bad decision making. It is a real army, admittedly. I'm glad to have a proper field battle in episode one. What are we dealing with here? Did I forget to turn off time limits again? Yeah, I did. It's fine. Shouldn't matter. We had a little bit of cavalry, some slingers. A lot of Syracuse and Hoplites, different kind of spearmen. Really should have read what these folks did, but oh well, here we are. 
So I'm seeing where they're at, and rather than trying to charge cavalry through the trees on the right flank, I'm gonna leave my right flank without cavalry and just swing my second unit way, way further wide than I previously planned to. So like, honest to God, I kind of think my Prinkapes on their own just win the fight. Also, apparently they're hiding. Are you folks sure about that? You look like you're on the road in a grassy plain at high noon, but okay. I don't want to get any closer because that'll start the skirmish phase, really. Right, my cavalry are drawing up wide here, and it's okay to start the skirmish phase because we're ready to fight them, really. And I like getting close to them, getting alongside the trees to make it harder for them to come on any sort of flank. They've got some spearmen over there. They seem like they're not entirely sure how they want to position this. I am. I just want to run in with Brinkapes, and as soon as I see an opening, crush them with cavalry superiority. Although I do want to stop for a second. I'm getting a little bit split up here. Are those your archers? I'm not quite ready to come in with my cavalry yet. All right, Prinkapes, you're heavy infantry reason. You're going to survive the missile barrage, right? At this point, we're so close to them with such superiority on cavalry, I'm gonna try to encircle them. I don't see a reason not to. Because they're trying to like redirect and have everything face my break base, and I just don't have to let them do that. Keep stepping forward until we're in range for javelins. They don't have anything in the back really, so this encirclement's gonna be brutal for them. We're in range for jabs. I need to rotate slightly because we're not all in range for jabs. They have one unit of spearmen trying to get in position, but that's not going to be nearly enough. Is it spearmen or something else? It's all spearmen. Spearmen all the way down. That's fine. That means they're exposed in the flank and able to protect themselves. You guys charge this. And as soon as they're close, we're going to charge with the rest of our cavalry. You back off, you're gonna get caught on the other spearmen. Come down here instead. And as this back line breaks, because they're like, it doesn't matter if you're spearmen when you're outnumbered this severely, right? It's only one unit of cavalry, it's a ja general cav at that, but it should still matter quite a lot on a charge. You, whichever cavalry this is, I can't find him. The enemy general flees! Things are going well, but I've lost track of my units. Which one of my cavalry is this? I was having a hard time seeing him when I selected him. Seriously, who do I have selected right now? I do have a cavalry here selected, don't I? Okay, there are multiple here. I've selected three different cavalry and your equites end up over there. Okay, now I can see what's happening. Cool, you guys back off to there. This whole group reform. Oh wait, have you not actually won? Crazy. Guys, I told you not to do this. I told you very explicitly not to do this. If you guys could come get involved real quick. The great gods be praised. The enemy general is killed. They're still fighting, huh? Victory's almost a certain Let's back off then. Uh, guys, I'm not quite sure where you're going, but it's not quite correct. Run this down. Run that down. Operation Run That Down is getting very close to Spearman, but I think it should be fine. Yeah, we're fine. Smash that. Is there anything running on foot? Yes, I'll take one of you off, the smallest one. Start running that down, start running the other one down. They're working on chasing things down, it's fine. So this is... Oh, I'm not supposed to kill them all, but you already killed 85%. No, we're nowhere near 85%. Keep running these things down. It's not 41%. It surprised me it's that high. Oh, is this the edge of the map? Yeah, they just got away. I was unaware. That's fine. They're not all supposed to be dead. Otherwise, we stack wipe them and they don't get to be using a force crawl out. Cool. Uh, I'll go ahead and continue. Wipe out that unit. They have 186 left, that is enough to not stack wipe them, which means we should be able to force them to the siege city and then use a force draw out to conquer the city without sieging it. So you're gonna back up to Leontinoi, right? Victory! Perfect. Orders. 
I need to get to this tile. And then I attack you. And unfortunately, your allies don't have a say in the matter. Wait, oh my god, is it Fix and RTR? I don't see a reinforcement army. General, prepare for battle. Yeah, it's just them. Wild. Okay, let's see how auto resolve is done in very hard, because I know it's bad, but I want to just like quickly do a test of this. You're gonna make me do it, right? Oh shit, you're not! I lost 18 men, who even cares? Victory! Sir, I'll take the siege here. Sir. Take some ladders, or Besieging not ladders, towers. Sir. Right, what else are we doing this turn? The Syracusan army is still here. Why? Why'd you back off if you didn't leave? So it looks like forced rollouts are fixed in Rome Total Realism Imperium Seractum. That's actually really good. It's very, very overpowered cheese that probably shouldn't have been in the game to begin with. Why is this city rioting? Get your shit together. Oh yeah, you know what? There is a shrine to the wrong god here. We need to get rid of that too. Syracuse is down to a population of 8,600, but that's still great. Isn't that like the same size as Capua? 9,700, basically the same size. We're gonna continue working on this second legion. Why does, it, why does Rome look so small right now? Why does the game look so weird? This happens to me very frequently when I have battles in Rome Total Realism, Imperium Seractum. It might just be the base game, it might not be the mod. But like, come out of the battle, everything just looks so wrong. Like, I can't put my finger on what's wrong, but the game looks a lot worse and a lot weirder right now. Oh, wow, I can't even make Principes here for 12 turns minimum, because I'll need the army barracks. You disappoint me, Syracuse. Because it's 12 turns to Principes, that basically means the city's just never building Principes, right? Like, by the time this is a recruiting center, I'll be bankrupt and unable to recruit things here. I'm just gonna send them back to Rome to get retrained. It'll take like two turns of movement, round trip, so four turns. I'm better off making this one a trade center. It's just so far away. Like, going to Carthage and Rome is not that much better than going from Syracuse to Rome. And Carthage itself will get the same improvements I'm planning on making here. I'm better off just focusing this city on trade. So let's go straight for that. And we need to make some moves on our diplomat. I believe there are some minor Greek settlements around here. I want to say Pergamon maybe is its own town. Yeah, nice. I would love to be best friends with you. If you'll give me money about it. Well, what's what a reasonable amount of money? Do? Yeah, sure, I'll take oh, $1,300. I don't need your map, it's just you. I know you don't have anything else. Without delay. And I think Egypt is like right around the corner down here, Without like in this delay. little peninsula. I wonder what my money was at the start of this. I imagine it went up a lot from getting Syracuse. I think we're up like 3,000 gold from where you started after enslaving so many people from Syracuse and getting the city itself. Just Syracuse, even with its reduced population, is still making 1,800 income per turn. It's massive. Yeah, that army's super conflicted. It ran back down again. It doesn't know what to do. All right, I'm gonna check real quick. Just like, can I auto-resolve this? Are you gonna make me? Because I mean, I've never seen balance of power this one-sided, right? Like. 78's a lot, but my time has some value to me. I'll take the auto resolve. 3,000 population redistributed, but I don't want to exterminate them and I don't want them at full pump. So enslave. Did anyone grow? They did. Take me there. We're also getting slave traders for all of our enslavement that's happening. Checks out. Reunite this guy with the rest of the army. And what I'll do is I'll create a minimal garrison with one of my shitty Prinkapes by retraining everyone else with them. And we're going to see how you do as a garrison unit. They fucking hate it. They are so far from okay with that. They cannot believe the sheer audacity of claiming that's a valid garrison. You know what? I kind of agree with them. Oh, I can hire mercenaries. And they're like basic Pelotas mercenaries that aren't that expensive. I don't need them is the issue, right? Hey, which of my less good guys has substantial influence? You're 34 with 10 influence. You can stick around here for a while until they're okay with it. And it looks like you need the garrison too, so... Let's get started on destroying the shit that's making them unhappy, also known as their own culture. Wait a second, Syracuse and recruitment, get out of here. Oh, their temple's already damaged, so it doesn't even affect the happiness to remove it the rest of the way. One thing I do not like about all resolve is how random buildings just get damaged for no reason. It's like I literally don't have the tools to do that. How are they taking damage? Get a temple down over here. Do we care about income or happiness? I mean, honestly, they're so okay right now that I think maybe Italic conversion followed by Roman recruitment. I, I, I'm going for this. I, I gotta make it functional. I can't justify not doing it. I want it to be bad and to be wrong, and it's not. They should be fine after this. The boat will be helpful for saving movement on this army. 
We hop in. The boat brings us up the shore to the next settlements. Drop them off on this side. Really pointless which side I drop them off on, but still. Towers and ladders. Maintain siege. Get back in the port safely. Is their fleet even threatening? No, they've got the same one boat ferry that I do. That's pretty funny. Continue on establishing the next legion, which is surprisingly far along the way already. I imagine they're working on equites now. Yeah. Oh, we've upgraded the uh, blacksmith now, so we need to retrain everything again. The last level of blacksmith does require a huge city, which Rome is not. However, when I do get there, it'll require a great forum. Well, we're not even a large city yet is the issue, right? So there's no point thinking about this. The level three temple, large temple of Mars, gets us a second chevron. We get heavy weapons for the second level of Temple of Minerva. And then the third one sucks. So what we're going to do is Minerva first, then Mars. Then we're going to do the next level of Mars. All right, everything's being built. We have a huge bank built up. We're making money every turn still. Things are going wonderfully. We're probably going to be able to get to a third Legion by the looks of it before we really start bankrupting ourselves, which is great news. I thought it'd be much less good than that. What am I going to be building here next? Probably the port for trade if they already have like a forum and all that jazz. Oh, they're not nearly as developed as I thought. They have a market and a basic dirt road. Well, maybe the port's not going to be great then. I don't have a great understanding of exactly what the colony buildings do. I'm going to go ahead and assume that they're good. It only takes four turns. I'm going to build the colony next. No, it's bad on happiness right now. I think they go they're going to need a sewers probably. And I can recruit things here. I'm actually going to spy in both of these settlements to keep an eye on Carthage because I'm expecting them to go to war with me relatively soon. I guess I should retrain these boats. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with them, but why not? Now, is Egypt actually right here? I swear to God it is. I was looking at a test campaign on Rhodes. I know Egypt is over here. Don't lie to me. Don't play with my heart. They can't be right there. You can't walk to there. Oh, are they down here? Yeah, they're just further down than I'm remembering. Damn. Oh, that was a waste of time. I know Egypt's around here, I promise. But I think that's going to be it for episode one. The start of the war with Syracuse and the wars with everyone. Let's toggle Fog of War and talk about future plans for a second. So you can see that, like, Lily Biome's all right as a potential recruiting center, so is Eric's and Panermos. Like, there's a lot of potential recruitment I can do there. But honestly, I'm not really concerned about it, because I'm not looking to start my war here. Don't get me wrong, when this city finishes wiping out Syracuse, and I guess I have inside information, I don't know exactly what they spawned with. Oh, I didn't know they had another city as well. That's kind of scary. Explains how they got such a big army so fast. But uh, even though you can make an absolutely insane recruiting center out of Sicily, my plan is not to do much with recruiting centers here. I want this so that I can retrain. But that's really it. I'm not planning on producing here. And that's because when I start my war with Carthage, I intend to do it with a second legion landing here at Carthage and Utica. And once I steal that from Carthage, pretty much all their military production left is over here. Wipe that out with the first legion, which will have nothing else to do at that point in time, because Syracuse will be dead. And that's what we're planning on doing with the second legion. However, the plan doesn't stop there. After the second legion, there's the third and the fourth. It's never going to stop. And the third and fourth legions are where we start getting to do interesting things. My first thought is I want to immediately take Athens. It's a large city, which is one of the biggest things on the starting map. Once I kill them, there's almost nothing else with them. It looks like they can Corinth already. They'll probably take some more because they're just a powerful faction, or capable of being a powerful faction at least. But taking Athens gives me a fantastic foothold in the Balkans. And it also gives me the freedom to like hire mercenaries as a garrison and keep going to take Rhodes as well, another large city as a fantastic foothold in Anatolia, and start trying my hopefully episode three or four to conquer Anatolia, the Balkans, and Northern Africa all simultaneously. Syracuse will be dead, and maybe Legion four or five will finally go into Cisalpine Gaul and start dealing with this. These are admittedly much bigger settlements than they started off as. They must start off fairly close to growing, because I'm pretty sure on turn one they are not minor cities yet. Which checks out, because I remember some nonsense in the base game, if I think it was Batavia, maybe Mediolanum, or some other settlement, there was something around here that grew insanely fast, and it makes sense that they're doing it up here as well, especially with AI hacks. But yeah, our plans is to conquer various footholds in various places. The first four or five legions, uh, probably the first three or four legions, are all going to come from Rome and Capua. But by around the time of Legion 6, we're going to be recruiting simultaneously across the whole world, and it's going to be very much total war. This is the one episode that is not going to be non-stop war in this whole campaign. But for now, I'm done. I hope you enjoyed it, despite it being a relatively slow start, and I'll see you in the next one, where things will be off to the fucking races. Thank you for watching, thank you to the RTRIS team for developing this awesome mod, and thank you to my one Patreon supporter, Jeffrey B. I'll see all of you in the next one.